Peace and greetings, Devanzio here. I'm gonna walk through real quick uh, the code for this uh, Bluetooth jammer that utilizes um, three NRF24s. Um, I think you'll appreciate this for your projects and you can modify, add whatever else you want, um, upgrade your own projects. Um, and the code uh, will make it so really you just change the pin numbers and a few other things if you want. Uh, so let's look at it real quick. All right, so here is the main firmware. So if you're not familiar with uh, C++ or Arduino IDE, the first part will be all these includes are just including libraries. So you can see um, you know where exactly it's at and i have it all um, nicely organized best as i could um, these are the bluetooth includes wi-fi wi-fi and nrf24 and uh, it's just best to have uh, coding standards and keeping everything clean so next we have the um, triple nrf24 setup and first we initiate an sbi class and uh, this VSPI is the name of that class, which is being used as a variable. And then we're loading um, VSPI because we're using we're using the S, a certain SPI bus on um, the the, S, the ESP32. The ESP32 has two um, SPI buses. It has the VSPI and then it has the HSPI. Um, but in this case, <clears throat> we're putting all three um, NRF24 radio modules on one SPI bus. And that's one thing people need to understand. You can load as, I don't know if a as many, but you can load multiple devices on a single SPI bus. Um, so for uh, this project, uh, for instance, we have three NRFs and the display on the same um, SPI bus. You just have to make sure that they have different um, CS and CE pins. So here's where um, is the most important part for setting up your radios. And I put here um, that it's the chip enable, then the chip select pin. <clears throat> And then um, you can see which radios. <clears throat> so uh, you can um, modify this for whatever radios you're using, or if you're using um, an ESP, uh, sorry, if you're using an ESP32, um, 32D, like uh, this one, then you can use the same pins. Or if you're using any room. Uh, if using any ESP32 room, um, you could just copy the pins I have here um, because I know that these pins uh, work. Next, we have the um, OLED display settings. Uh, so if you're using a different display, you can um, import the library. Like this is for um, my library. So um, if you're using a different library, um, you want to change that and then make sure you match the pixels on um, your screen. And also, um, you need to make sure <clears throat> your ITC, I2C address is correct for um, your screen. And then here we um, implement the display. And also for the fonts, I'm using uh, U8G2. Um, so if you're using different fonts or you want to import your own fonts, um, you do it right there. And then I have a LED. If you are using LED, you can uh, use this. If you're not, um, don't use it. Uh, for your buttons, um, you want to make sure you have the right pins for your buttons. Uh, but once again, if you're just following along, um, you can use, uh, and you're using the same ESP, you can use these buttons. 
So uh, this is where the state management is. This is where if you want to add your own menu items, you're going to have to do um, pretty much the same process. Uh, so first you'll add in the state. Um, so here I already have some template states for you. And then next you'll go to the menu items and you'll add in or remove uh, the menu items. But you have to keep the um, same order for these menu items as with the next uh, step. Um, so you're going to scroll down. to the draw menu function because here you'll find the menu labels. So um, <clears throat> let's say you added something from before, you gotta add it into the same order as um, it was previously. And then whenever you add things, the um, algorithms will automatically um, add your menu items. So if you want to add 10 menu items, just do the right process and um, your UI will work itself out. So here we have some uh, other variables. Um, here we're using a non-blocking delay. Um, it's kind of like a little trick, but a lot normally a lot of people will just do um, a regular delay, but that's um, a blocking delay. So if you have certain processes um, that need to be running uh, concurrently, and this is kind of a little bit more advanced, um, these delays could actually be um, more detrimental. Um, so I have a cleaner way of doing uh, delays. Um, if you want to copy that for your other projects, go for it. And so the next section, we have NRF24. This is where you set up the radios. Um, so I, I have it all in one function. So um, if you have two radios, you can comment out certain things or it really doesn't matter. It just won't um, start. But this is basically the process um, and if you're using, uh, obviously, VSPI and HSPI, then make sure to use the correct um, SPI variable. And this code I have commented out um, because uh, this is a fix if you happen to have one of the CE or CS pins on um, an input pin. Um, some pins, uh, like <clears throat> I think it's like 34, 39, 36 or whatever, on the ESP are uh, input only. Um, so there is a trick to get around that um, if needed. But I just left that in there um, in case anyone's in the same dilemma because you are using a lot of pins with three radios. So it's very important how you um, put everything in there. So next I have the actual functions of the signal generator. And I left some uh, tips in case you wanna work uh, some other things out in your own terms so you kinda understand how it works. Um, like here we have Bluetooth. Um, so you can see that it only targets the specific range of uh, Bluetooth and so forth with the other um, features. <clears throat> and once again, this is just me um, just brainstorming, thinking of different options, but please be creative and um, build on this. So here we have uh, just other general configuration stuff um, for the display, the menus, um, the borders, uh, displaying text, you know, there's a specific function just for displaying text. And this is really how you do your code. You want to uh, make things modular. Um, so really all I do is I just, whenever I want to display text on uh, the screen, I just call this function with whatever text uh, I want. 
you know, and in this way, I won't have to copy and paste this function over and over and over again. Um, so then we have uh, just button logic and menu logic. Um, this is for the uh, intro screen. So all this, all of this are graphics, um, but it's just a memory conscious way to display those graphics. <clears throat> And just more um, general configuration of the display screens. Um, here is where um, the actual functions are launched when you click a button. So if you're adding more states, then you have to add those states to this switch clause. And switch clause is basically, basically like, um, here is a list of variables, these states. If one of them is selected, the case, do this. Um, that is the most simplistic way I could explain an advanced topic like switch clauses. Um, but basically every state you add, which is an event, um, you have to add another case to this switch clause. And it's pretty simple. Um, it's pretty much copy and paste for each new case. You know, all you're changing is the, the um, text that you want to be displayed and um, the actual um, function that is being launched. So next we have um, the setup, <clears throat> which is pretty straightforward. Um, really nothing here you need to edit it just sets up the buttons and the LED and the displays and um, if you don't want the intro screen uh, this is where you can um, remove that and you can also remove the um, info display info screen um, but just leave draw menu you, you need that so then in the loop um, it's pretty straightforward all the loop is is um, it just checks for different menu selections. And then all of these cases, which once again, when you add a uh, new case, you need to add um, the corresponding case here as well. This just checks to see if you press the select button uh, and then it returns back to the main menu. But this is the logic. So whatever function you're doing, you can always cancel and return back to the main menu. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, it's about 500-ish lines of code, really not too much. And I tried to make it um, as simplistic and clean and organized as possible. Uh, but hopefully this should help with any issues um, if you're trying to um, edit it, customize it, um, do all that stuff on your own terms. Um, I will be coming out with a, a, a new PCB for all of this. Um, it should be accompanying um, Project Starbeam, but uh, wanted to give people some options, uh, especially if you don't want to completely invest in uh, a more substantial uh, version of this. And you can uh, also make your uh, own PCBs and get them made at PCB way. Um, Using my link, you can get a discount and uh, save a little bit as well and also help me out. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend you try this project, at least with the code and the um, pin layouts that I'll put on the GitHub. Um, you should be able to build on top of that with your own projects.